Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. We are really excited. I'm excited to talk a little bit about what is the resurrection and kind of some of the details about that. Some of the other videos we've done are why do we have to die? So if you click up here and want to learn why we die, what the purpose is, you can watch that. Also another one we have is what happens when we die? Like where do we go? And then just following in sequence of that is the resurrection. Okay, and the resurrection Everything you want to know about the resurrection that we know currently, I'll talk about. This is going to be an awesome video. Um, if you'll notice, I have a special guest here, one of the Ninja Turtles. I'm not sure if that's Michelangelo, but he'll play a part in the video today in helping us understand what is the resurrection. So first, we're going to answer this question by going like this. We're going to talk about the who, what, when, where, why, how, and when, I think I already said when, of the resurrection. We're going to answer all those questions, okay? And I want to start by first reading, again, we are learning from the Book of Mormon, what the Book of Mormon helps us understand about these things. And I have one right here. I'm going to turn first, sorry, I dropped that paper, in Alma, chapter 11. Um, these are some amazing verses that talk about the resurrection. It's Alma, chapter 11, verse 42 to 45. It says, now, there is a death which is called a temporal death. And the death of Christ shall loose the bands of this temporal death, that all shall be raised from this temporal death. So, temporal meaning death of the body, okay? And this scripture says that all people will be raised from this temporal death. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form. Both limb and joint shall be restored to its proper frame even as we now are at this time. And we shall be brought to stand before God, knowing even as we know now, and have a bright, recollec bright recollection of all our guilt. Okay, so some really important things there. Death is a reuniting of our spirit and our body, and also that we shall be brought to stand before God. And I'm going to talk about that using our ninja turtle, turtle um, in one quick second. Verse 44 says, Now this restoration shall, be, shall come to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, both the wicked and the righteous, and even there shall not be so much as a hair of their head be lost. But everything shall be restored to its perfect frame, as it is now, or in the body, and shall be brought and be arraigned before the bar of Christ the Son and God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, which is one eternal God, to be judged according to their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Now behold, I have spoken unto you concerning the death of the mortal body, and also concerning the resurrection of the mortal body. I say unto you that this mortal body is raised to an immort immortal body, that is, from death, even unto, even from the first death unto life, that they can die no more their spirits uniting with their bodies, never to be divided. Thus, the whole becoming spiritual and immortal, that they can no more see corruption. Okay, lots of stuff. But here we learn who is resurrected. All people, not just those who do good, and not nobody. Everyone is resurrected. Two things happen in the resurrection, which are really important. And this has to do with Adam and Eve. We'll talk about this. When they partook of the fruit, they were cast out of the Garden of Eden, and their bodies became mortal. Okay? So this is Adam and Eve, let's have a representation. They lived with God. They were cast out of his presence. So let's take them over here. And they were subject to death. So they died. Okay? Now what's really important about the resurrection is that through the resurrection, all people will be raised from the dead and come alive again. But that's not the only important part. The most important part, I think, is after we are alive again, we are returned back into the presence of God to be judged according to our works, okay? So I think that's one missing piece that a lot of people don't understand is when we are resurrected, Christ not only gives us the power to come alive spirit temporally, but spiritually, that separation from from God is also taken care of and we're brought back into the presence of God to remain until we're judged. And hopefully if we've lived good lives, then 
we will be able to stay in his presence. But that's something really important, okay? So we talked about that. I want to focus a little more on how it is that we are able to be resurrected and through whom. And so we're going to go to another scripture in 2 Nephi, chapter 2. And this is a short one. But it says... Wherefore, how great the importance to make these things known unto the inhabitants of the earth, that they may know that there is no flesh that can dwell in the presence of God, save it be through the merits and mercy and grace of the Holy Messiah, who layeth down his life according to the flesh, and taketh it again by the power of the Spirit, that he may bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, being the first that should rise. Wherefore, he is the first fruits unto God, inasmuch as he shall make an intercession for all the children of men. Okay. It says, Because of this intercession, all men come unto God. Wherefore, they stand in the presence of him to be judged. So I read like 8, 9, and 10 because it just kept going. And it was such good stuff. So it's through Jesus Christ and his mercy that we are able to be resurrected and be brought back into the presence of God. Okay. So now, uh, we talked a little about the who, who is resurrected, we all will be, and through whom, it's through Jesus Christ, we talked about how we're resurrected, um, the spirit and the body come together and not, like I kind of have a little bald spot there, when I'm resurrected, that'll all be restored, and people who are maimed or sick or have disabilities, their bodies, when they're resurrected, will be in a perfect form, Okay. So they have a lot to look forward to. I had a friend growing up, her name was Marcia. She had chronic arthritis, was always in pain, was in a wheelchair. Um, or in, you know, she didn't have those crutches to walk in. But I'd always tell her, you know what? You have a lot to look forward to in the resurrection. And she would say that too. She's excited for it. Okay, a couple more things. We'll talk about the when, okay? The when of the resurrection. When does this happen, okay? In Alma chapter 40, again, Alma was a prophet in the Book of Mormon. He was talking to one of his sons. He said, Behold, there is a time appointed that all shall come forth from the dead. Okay, so that's important to realize that there is a time. It's appointed time for each of us. And it's God, there's order. There's order with God. So it's a, it's a thing that's going to happen. And it's all organized. And it, that there is a time. Now, we don't know specifically when that will be, but we do know, um, let's see, let's read and continue to verse 6. It says, there must needs be a space betwixt the time of death and the time of resurrection. And we talked about that in a previous video, like where do you go when we die? After we die, we go either to paradise or spirit prison where we await the resurrection, okay? And then... Um, one other thing we want to talk about is that Christ was the first fruits of them that slept, meaning he was the first to be resurrected. Um, but it says here in verse 16, And behold, again it hath been spoken that there is a first resurrection, a resurrection of all those who have been, or who are, or who shall be, down to the resurrection of, down to the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Okay, I'm actually going to turn now to a scripture in the Bible because I'm not sure how many people are familiar with this story but once Christ was on the cross and he gave up the ghost and died and was then resurrected some really important events happened one of the which is found in Matthew 27 and I'm going to turn to Matthew really quickly so we can read this because it's fascinating um and this is something that also happened on the American continent, which I'll mention in a second. But in Matthew 27, it says, The graves were opened, this is verse 52, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So after Christ was resurrected, there were certain people that were resurrected after that point in time. And when Christ visited the Americas, and again, we have a record of Christ's visit to the Americas in the Book of Mormon. There was a prophet in the Book of Mormon named Samuel who prophesied that after Christ died and was resurrected, many graves would be opened and people would be resurrected. 
And so when Christ came, he appeared to the people on the American continent. He actually came up to Nephi, who was one of the prophet. He was a prophet at that time on the American continent, and he said, "Hey, didn't Samuel prophesy that many graves would be opened and saints would be resurrected?" And Nephi's like, "Yeah, he did say that." And he said, "Jesus asked, did that happen?" And Nephi's like, "Yeah, it really, it did. It did." And Jesus said, "Did you write it down in the scriptures?" He's like, "No, I forgot." And so that's actually recorded in here where. Christ kind of calls him out and says, you need to make sure you write down that that happened. Um, just a couple more things, guys. Again, this is fascinating stuff. Now, keep in mind, like, how much of this information do we know from the Bible? And how much more information are we gleaning from the Book of Mormon? Um, it's, really, it's really awesome. Um, I wanted to turn really quickly now. Um, we have in the Book of, uh, excuse me, in the King James Version of the Bible that we use in our church. We also have something called the Bible Dictionary. And it goes in and explains a few of these principles. It kind of summarizes them and it goes a little more in depth. But under the resurrection, I wanted to read um, just a quick part here. It says, The resurrection consists in the uniting of a spirit body with a body of flesh and bones, never again to be divided. So this is kind of recapping. The resurrection shall come to all, because of Jesus Christ's victory over death, Jesus Christ was the first to be resurrected on this earth. Others had been brought back to life, but were restored to mortality. So think of like Lazarus. He wasn't resurrected. He was brought back to life. All will be raised to the same... It says all will not be raised to the same glory in the resurrection. And that's something we'll talk about in a future video. Um, when you're resurrected, as it says in Corinthians, there are different glories that you're resurrected to, different kinds of bodies, okay? Did you know that? There's celestial bodies, terrestrial bodies, and celestial bodies that are spoken about in Corinthians, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, Christ was the first, okay? And it talks about the New Testament giving ample evidence that Jesus Christ was resurrected and had a physical body he like ate fish and honey he said he had a body of flesh and bones people touched him the tomb was empty um okay and then one last thing we want to read real quick is this is from a book called preach my gospel and this is actually one of the books that missionaries you might have seen missionaries go around um, they have name tags on and they teach people about the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, this is one of the books they use. Um, and there's something that is really important in here that I wanted to emphasize. Um, some people may confuse the doctrine of resurrection with the concept of reincarnation. And reincarnation involves being born into the world again in a different form. And that is actually not a correct doctrine. That is a concept that is kind of been confused with the resurrection and kind of shifted and changed over the years. But the doctrine of resurrection involves receiving an eternal reward of an immortal body of flesh and bone. Okay, and this is the true doctrine. Okay, so who, what, when, where, why, how, we learn so much from the Book of Mormon. And again, from additional scripture, in the Doctrine and Covenants, we actually read about the resurrection and those different degrees of the resurrection of celestial bodies, celestial bodies, and terrestrial bodies. Um, and we're going to study about that in a future video. Another thing we'll talk about, have you guys thought about this? Resurrection, when someone's resurrected, let's say, for example, if someone's baptized, who performs that baptism? Well, it's somebody who has the proper authority, like a priest in, your, in the church, okay? When you're resurrected, who... Who performs that ordinance? Who who does that resurrection? That's something to think about. And we actually have that answer, and we will share that in one of our next videos. But again, guys, if you have any specific questions that you'd like me to go over in one of these videos, let me know. If you want a Book of Mormon, you can click on one of the links below, and you can actually get one for free. And I look forward to answering more of your questions, and we'll talk to you next time.